Emma, considered by many to be Jane Austen's most accomplished novel, provides critical commentary on the values and standards of English society during the Regency era. Despite being set in a world quite different from our own, its exploration of human nature and the perspective it gives of the past still make it relevant today. It achieves this through various technical elements, such as narrative voice, elaborate characterization, as well as subtle use of literary features such as irony and symbolism. Combine these create an intricate web of events and mysteries that the reader is left to unravel and understand the flawed nature of both the characters and the rigid class structure in which they exist. Perhaps the most apparent criticism of the novel is of the institution of arranged marriage, which it reveals through various types of irony and a unique narrative voice. These subversive elements show how the pretentious nature of English etiquette can result in misguided attempts of marriage, which are damaging to all involved. This idea is developed through the eponymous protagonist of the novel, who, after successfully predicting the marriage of a governess, presumes that she is able to understand people's interests, and in her newly created boredom, sets out to secure a better place in society for her friend Harriet. Austen's unique narrative voice, frequently termed free and direct discourse, combines the traditional omnipotent third-person narrator, who describes events objectively, and the first-person subjective voice of Emma. Through this technique, the opinions and emotions of Emma are subtly impressed upon the reader, creating a bias to view characters and events via her eyes. This is evident from this line. This simultaneously creates dramatic irony, as the reader is prompted to understand the situation from Emma's point of view, believing that Mr. Elton's affections are aimed at Harriet. This irrational confidence causes Emma and the reader to ignore the advice of other characters, such as John Knightley, and he suggests to reconsider Mr. Elton's affections in the following passage. Emma imagines that she comprehends the circumstances fully, which is conveyed with the use of situational irony, but is herself proven to be blind and ignorant when Mr. Elton passionately confesses. Ironically, he shows himself to be as deluded as Emma, and failing to recognize that his suit towards her is just as unacceptable as the idea of him being engaged to Harriet, as the established social hierarchy of the time forbids people to marry below their social class. This revelation in the story invites the reader to evaluate their own infallibility regarding the knowledge of the plot and of themselves. Emma's conceit in making Harriet too tall is Miss Hanadley metaphorically comments, as well as her misleading actions towards Mr. Elton, permanently damages the relationship of the pair, between themselves and with Emma, therefore showing how unreasonable it is for Emma in society to manipulate people into relationships without considering their true wishes or feelings. In this manner, Austin criticizes the convention of arranged marriage by inducing the reader to be as confident as Emma through free and direct discourse and dramatic irony, only to ridicule the idea and the resulting blunder by comically demonstrating how deluded both the protagonist and the reader are through situational irony. Another structure Austin critiques is the overwhelming dependency of women on marriage as a respectable means to be financially and socially secure. She does so through juxtaposing the characters of Emma and Jane Fairfax to illustrate how the personal qualities or efforts of women were disregarded in favor of wealth and social standing. From the very start of the novel, Emma's circumstances are portrayed as extremely, if not unusually, favorable. It is this relative independence that brings about Emma's self-indulgence and arrogance, which prevent her from improving personally, as she already considers herself superior to the rest of Highbury's residents. As Mr. Knightley points out, this disposition to think a little too well of herself and her indisputable status are exemplified during the exploring party on Box Hill, when she insults Miss Bates in the following line. Even though this comment is so vastly insolent, None of the party except Mr. Knightley have the authority to scold Emma's behavior, showing her high rank in society. In contrast to Emma, Jane Fairfax is reflective of the restrictive standards towards women present in the Regency era. She is portrayed as diametrically opposed to Emma. Although lacking in wealth, she displays much better manners and is humble about her talents, as Emma comments hyperbolically in this line. Moreover, Jane Fax's devoted practice and performance on the pianoforte that Emma describes through an analogy is much superior to her own and the mysterious gift of one to her is symbolic of her predicament. The instrument, being a very expensive commodity, represents the upper class of society to which Jane clearly belongs, but is unable to achieve due to her low birth. In the same manner, the secrecy with which Frank Churchill gets the piano to Jane is reflective of the way the pair has to conceal their engagement due to it being improper. Such contrasting characterization portrays the injustice of Regency society, as Jane is raised to become a governess due to lacking any inheritance or title, and must enter employment, whilst Emma has no need to be concerned about her future whatsoever. This gives perspective as to how society has changed over time and may stimulate readers to look for inconsistencies in their own culture. Hence, through the juxtaposition of the rich and careless Emma and poor but diligent Jane, Austen demonstrates the flawed principles that women are judged by and their limited social mobility during her time. 
Most inferred comments on the strict, insincere, and tedious etiquette of 19th century England by mocking it through satire. Mr. Woodhouse's constant concern for Emma or his neighbors being afflicted with some illness, as well as his delicate diet represent the enclosed structure of Ivory's aristocracy, and the Regency era as a whole. As Mr. Woodhouse objects to any new or remotely hazardous activity, so is society reluctant to accept change. Similarly, the preoccupation with outward appearances is ridiculed through Highbury's view of the ironically named Frank Schrotro, whom is firmly believed to be a proper gentleman by most of its residents even before he arrives in Highbury. Frank's well-written letters and bold behavior, which should not be deceptive, show the dishonest and arbitrary nature of English etiquette. This idea is also present in the conduct of Miss Bates, her endless monologues being satirical of the uneventful lifestyle of Highbury and a consequent gossip that seeks to replace this monotony. In addition to being lengthy, these speeches have a comical effect due to Austin's punctuation, which utilizes dashes to separate each incomplete sentence, removing any rhythm and making the passage appear more chaotic and vague. Thus, the novel effectively satirizes the flawed etiquette of its society through the comical mannerisms of its characters. In summary, Austin effectively critiques a broad range of ideas present during the Regency period using a variety of technical devices. Restrictive class structure and the limited opportunities of women, the vanity of arranged marriage, or the needlessly strict etiquette expected in high society are the main ideas she examines in Emma. She employs characterization, free and direct discourse, irony, and satire to subtly convey her criticisms that, although directed at a drastically different social order, and mostly unrelated to contemporary culture, are still thought-provoking today.